Okay, this is July 8, 1983. Joe Todd, an interview with Mr. and Mrs. Henry Andrews. Mr. Andrews, where were you born? I was born in Luther. Luther, Oklahoma. Luther. And when's your birthday? March the 12th. I was born 1899. 1899. Mrs. Andrews, where were you born? I was born in Corsicana, Texas. And when's your birthday? December the 24th. Should I ask what year? 1904. 1904. Mm -hmm. When did you come to uh, Langston? When did we come to Langston? Yes, ma'am. In, in, was 1904 or five? Uh, about 19, the latter part of 1904 or five, because I was just six weeks old when my parents brought me here. How come they came to Langston? Well, um, my, my, my dad, my parents used to live in uh, Louis, Louisiana. And they moved from there to Texas. And uh, times got kind of rough in Texas, and uh, we, uh, my father had heard about uh, Oklahoma as being a good farming, you know, state. So he came prior to our coming. About he was here about a year and built a build a home while he was here. Yeah. What was uh, his name? M. Matthew Thomas Amos. And he built a home while he was here. And uh, later on, we came. Later on, he sent for the family, and we came to Oklahoma in 1904. He had bought a farm four miles, three miles south and one mile west of Langston, 160 acres, and that's where he built a farm. That's where he, we came from. We came from Guthrie, and that, that was the nearest train station. We came on the train, and we drove and came in a wagon from Guthrie to our farm out here, three miles south and four miles and one mile west. Yeah. So, when did you come to Langston? I came to Langston first in 1920. I was in school enrolled in Langston University then. I worked part time in my sister's store. In post office. Post office. She on post office and store Ayers. Oh, was she the postmaster here? Yeah, yeah. What was her name? Uh, Winnie. Winnie Ayers. Winnie Andrews Ayers. They had a general store and a post office. Yeah. It was in the same building. Mrs. Andrews, did your father know Mr. McCabe? I imagine he did. I don't know that he did. I'm not sure of that, but I imagine he did. Yeah, did you ever meet him? Huh? Did you ever meet Mr. No, McCabe? No. He's the man that uh, gave, land. gave the land to Langston yeah, University. Right. Uh -huh. I imagine he did because uh, Langston University was built right along about the time my daddy and uh, two other people that moved from Texas came to Oklahoma. Yeah. And that was... Uh, my uncle, Morris J. Amos, and, uh, on the, and Mr. Wright. Yeah. Sir, what, what was your father's name? Samuel. We called him Sam. Sam Andrews. Sam Andrews. When did he come to Oklahoma? He was in Iran. He was 89. Oh, he was in 89. Where did he stake his claim? In, uh, in Oklahoma County, two, two miles south, two miles west, and a mile south of Luther. So both of your parents were farmers then? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. great farmers. Okay. What kind of crop did you all raise? We raised cotton, we raised everything. We didn't have to go to town for anything. We raised everything. Cotton, corn. Cotton, corn, wheat. All kind of vegetables. vegetables. We, didn't, we didn't go to town for nothing. Yeah. As kids, how much cotton could you all pick in a day? Well, there's never no kids. We, sometimes we, if we wait till the cotton got over, we'd pick a bale a day. It's 
1600. Yeah. What was the price of cotton back then? <laughs> it was very cheap. I don't but, it, have no idea. but everything else was cheap. Yeah. Everything yeah. else was was reasonable. So uh, it was um, in accordance with the, the prices of things. Yeah. Where was the gin? The gin was right straight on on this oh, street. Yeah, it was right down here. Mm -hmm. And it was, I don't know where it was first. It was up here, you know, where Wendy Williams lived. You know where uh, Wendy Williams lived? That's where the gin was first. Mm -hmm. And then they moved it down here. That's where the dug well down here, the big dug well. Mm -hmm. Who ran the gin? A man by the name of Mr. Walker. Walker. Yes, I don't I can't, I don't remember his first name. But it was ran, run by Mr. Mr. Walker. Did y'all ever come with your father to bring the cotton to town? Mm, oh, yes, sit up on those bales. Yes, <laughs> sit up on those bales yeah, of hay, yes. Can you tell me, how, how did the gin operate? Well, I don't know how it operated, but uh, it was, uh, people brought their cotton in there, and it was a big uh, machinery rig took up all the oil. Large space. It's fired by wood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wood yes. Run by a steam engine? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Mrs. Andrews, what kind of chores did you do on the farm as a child? Well, I milked cows after I got about 12 years old or something like that. Or on a, um, I milked cows, I milked four cows, and I separated the cows from the calves, and carried the calves to one pasture and turned the cows into another pasture. I picked up chips, I brought in the eggs, and uh, I uh, helped my mother in the kitchen, and uh, helped take care of, clean my room. Did you do the laundry? No, I didn't do any laundry. My mother was so to that. She was afraid that things wouldn't be neat. She was a very neat lady. What she was her name? Molly. Molly. Amos. So where did your parents come from? My parents uh, came from, originally from Tennessee, but they came to Oklahoma from Kansas. Kansas. How come they came to Oklahoma to make the run? What prompted them? Well, you know, everybody was looking for a home in that time. He was trying to establish, set up housekeeping, looking for a home. And actually, he was interested in the land here, and he just rode a black pony and came to Oklahoma. What kind of house did he build on his claim? Build a log house for log his house. Yes, we had a log house. How big was it? We had three rooms. Mm -hmm. What kind of chores did you do in the farm as a child? Well, I, uh, I did the color baking the cotton and chopping the cotton. And most of my, uh, after I got for 15 or 16 years old, I went with my dad to, to do work because he was a stone mason. Mm -hmm. And I went with him to make the harder for him and wait on him. He built all those stone houses in Lupa. Did he quarry the stone or just build the house? Yes, sir. We quarried the stone and built the house. Where'd he quarry the stone? Just anywhere you could find them. People were very lean with the thing. You could go on anybody's farm, you know, if you see a place where you was a good rock, he'd pour them out. What was the best building stone? That's, that's sand, what they call it, sand loam. It's, it's easier to build because it wasn't so hard, you know, but the best stone is that's uh, what's called a kind of granite black rock. Yeah. But they're too hard to shape. So yeah, how do you quarry granite stone? How do you do that? Well, you set off dynamite, you know, and Drilled holes in the ground about <coughs> five or six feet deep, and you put a charge of dynamite in there and set it off. And 
throw the stones. Let's throw a, if, you, if you want to go down, if you want your chart to go down, you set it with a with powder. With a, with a powder. And powder will go down. And dynamite will blow them up. Okay. Powder will uh, break it loose. Yeah. And you set it down. Dynamite in there. What kind of mortar did you use? We use a, we use a what we call a, we uh, have this lump. Cement in those days would come. Well, it wasn't slight. We'd have to slight that line, you see. And then we'd mix, mix that with uh, sand. Mix them all. Mm -hmm. So your father built most of the stone buildings in Luther? Yes, sir. What do you remember of Luther as a child? How big was the town? Oh, Luther was, I imagine, well, the real inhabitants of Luther wasn't so large, but there's so many people all around Luther. Man, on Saturdays, <laughs> Saturday evening, we'd go to town, you, you just couldn't hardly get up and down the streets. Because there's uh, most every farm had one or two families on it. And, mm -hmm. Very well, quickly, thickly settled with colored people at that time. What did you do for recreation on Saturday in town? Oh, we played ball, football, uh, uh, baseball. We had a we had a farm there out west, and we we up on the hill. We had a, a diamond set out out there, and we Saturday, and Saturday evening especially, we'd have a ball game. Five of us boys, and so we had the majority of. Hmm. And you entered the university in 1920? Yes. Okay. Where'd you go to high school? I went to Guthrie. Guthrie? Guthrie? Yeah. Where's the first school you attended? I'm sorry. Hmm. Where, where was the first school you attended? My school was two miles east and a mile, two miles west and a mile north of Luther. What was the name of it? I don't know what, what it seemed like to me is Moe's, what they call Moe's Crossing School. Moe's Crossing. Remember your teacher's name? My first teacher's name was Jones. <laughs> Jones. Professor Jones. And then that man that ran, the man's wife that ran the barbershop in Luther, didn't she teach? I remember when we were going there, when we, I don't know what year it was, but that first time we saw an automobile pass the school. The doctor had an automobile pass the school. We broke up school. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of car was it? Ford. Ford. Driven by chain, you know. Yep. See, of course, you don't remember that. But the chain driven then, you know. I've old, seen them, but. All brass and all like that, you know, setting up the lights set way up high. Mrs. Andrews, where did you start to school? I went, I went to a little school about a uh, mile and a half south, uh, southeast of our farm. It was named Lincoln School, District 72. I never shall forget. That's my first impression of school. What was your teacher's name? My first teacher was named Mr. J.E. Floyd of Guthrie, Oklahoma. What was your favorite subject? <laughs> well, history and English. English mostly was my favorite subject. Sir, what was your favorite subject? My favorite subject was mathematics and uh, what they call arithmetic and, and uh, English. What kind of games did y'all play in school? Oh, baseball. And, uh, and, uh, Whatever was 
saying though. Anyway, may, uh, everybody catch hand, and then we'll make a circle and and go around real fast. And sometimes we'll throw some children, they will throw some children way off down in the ditch. Is that crack the Pop whip? Pop whip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pop whip. Yeah. That was one of our, our good uh, games. And then baseball. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite childhood memory? Oh, my favorite childhood memory. I have so many of them. I guess uh, going to school. I guess going to school around home. Looking forward to Sunday. That was one of our big days, you know. People visited each other then. My parent would go visit, maybe say, for instance, your parent about a mile away this Sunday and they'd stay all day and have dinner. Next Sunday they'd be at our house, next Sunday we'd be there. That was a pleasant memories. Sir, did you plow? Hmm? Did you plow? Oh, yes, yes. How much could you plow in a day? Oh, an acre, an acre and a half, a couple of acres. Is that a walking plow? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Use mules or horses? Two mules. Two mules. Two mules. We mostly use mules mm -hmm. for plowing. We had two or three horses, but we use them for riding. So. to go to turning plow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do you two remember, oh, I was going to ask, excuse me, remember Statehood Day? Huh? Statehood Day? Statehood Day. When Oklahoma became a state in 1907. 1907. 1907. 1907. Mm -hmm. Was there a big celebration around Luther? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 What was that day like? Do you have any memories of it? Oh, man, it's uh, overflowing. Overflowing the people and shooting firecrackers and what have you over into the night. Tell me about World War One. Was there much work for the war effort around this? Was there much work for the war effort in this area in 1917, 1918? Oh, yes, they, they was the WPA in progress then. No, there wasn't too much work uh, 1917, 1918, no, because that was when the war, yeah. World War I. First World War. Well, people were disturbed because their boys were going off to the army. And incidentally, I had a brother that was supposed to have left in 1918 on a Monday for the army, and he got hurt in a car wreck on Sunday, and he died Thursday. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't much, much work. Yes. How many boys in this area went to the war? Let me see. Rulers, Robert Wickham, Curdle. About six or eight. Mm -hmm. From around here. Did they all come back? Yes, they sure did. Every one of them. That's good. Mm -hmm. Right. What about Armistice Day when the war ended? Oh, November goodness. 11th, 1918. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a glorious time. Was it a big celebration? Yes. Mm -hmm. Glorious time. Seeing the little ones come, seeing their children come back, their boys come back. It was 
someone is. What do you remember most about your parents? Oh, I remember a lot about my parents. Uh, in what way? You mean? Anyway? Just in just what you want to say about them. Anyway, well, I had a, I had wonderful parents. Not on the farm. I had a wonderful parents. And uh, one thing about it, they they worked together. Uh, the the father, my father, was the head of the house. You know, <laughs> in comparatively. But nowadays, the father isn't the head of the house, but uh, he was the head of the house, and he provided, and he provided beautifully for us children, and my, my mother and, and us. And uh, he was a Christian man. Uh, every Sunday morning, we had uh, family prayer. We had, uh, we had uh, prayer at the table, yeah, through the week time, but Sunday morning we had devotion, what we call devotion. We had an organ, he bought us an organ, and uh, I played, and we sang. We had devotion before we had, before we got any breakfast, and everybody, nobody started to eat, eating until all were at the table. We had a, we had a wonderful, wonderful home. Where'd you learn to play? What did you learn to play the organ? I learned to play. When did I learn to play? What, when and well, where? Where? Uh, I, just just hearing songs or you know singing songs. I played by ear, not oh, note. Okay. I had a chance to take music, but I didn't. My teacher I thought was mean, and I wouldn't go to practice. <laughs> <laughs> what was her name? Mr. Lizzie, Mrs. Lizzie Slaughter. Let me tell forget it. She whipped my hands, <laughs> and uh, I quit going. Uh, I played hooky. I, I regret it. Yeah. I regret it. But I played by ear. Yeah. Uh, for whatever uh, sound of the music, I played by ear. Mm -hmm. I still That's play good. by ear. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I could have been playing by notes. I know a few notes, but I didn't stay long enough to learn, <laughs> to learn a lot of them because she whipped my hands. Did you get in trouble for playing hooky? Yes, I did. I got in trouble. <laughs> I sure did. I got in trouble. But I finally won. <laughs> Sir, what about your parents? My parents were very religious. We, uh, just about like her, we had our devotion each Sunday morning. And, and if we, uh, after church, if we didn't go to church, we'd have our regular devotion up through the day, you know, we now we all meet and sing. Papa had us a piano. He finally bought us one of these player player pianos. You remember? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Then you know, we had a lot of religious songs. Eleven of us kids, you know, we had a good time. We had a pretty good time. You know. But our biggest celebration had come in Christmas time. Cause my father's birthday was on Christmas, so we had a double celebration. Tell me about your first Christmases. What do you remember about those? Well, my first Christmas, the first really Christmas, Christmas was uh, wonderful for all of us. In those days, we didn't use stockings. We used uh, shoe boxes. We'd buy shoe boxes, <coughs> shoes through the year, you know, we'd save our shoe box. And we'd put all our shoe boxes down inside the wall for Santa to put our presents in, you know. And that's the way we received our presents then. But uh, after I began to get pretty good size, I went to a Christmas program down to Luther. I was the youngest one out that night. So coming on back, I saw a light in the house and it got close to the house. And mm -hmm. I got there, my mother was out putting out the candy and the presents in the boxes, you know, and she didn't pay attention to me. And I was so surprised. I did. I really didn't know there was no Santa, you know, up until then. That just hurt me so bad when I come back. <laughs> I'm sorry I found it out. <laughs> but they were, they were very religious. Yeah. What about your first Christmas? What do you remember about it? Well, I remember this incident. <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, 
parent used to cook, have everything cooked for Christmas. On Christmas Day, they didn't have to cook. All they had to do was warm up food. They would start to cook in cakes a week before Christmas. And my mother had a big, big old trunk with a round top. That's where she put her, her cakes and pies and things. And uh, this Saturday, this particular Saturday, uh, she was making the dressing for the turkey. And she told me to, to go, uh, to go get some onions and peel them, you know, for her dressing. So I did. And when I brought the onion back, they were talking, uh, my mother and my other two older sisters. And mother said, uh, if you all had let me alone, I wouldn't have bought Eva another doll because she kept this nice doll so good. And I wonder what she was talking about. So I went out to my brother that he and I ran together all the time. He was a little older than me. I said, Buster, I said, I heard Mama said, say uh, if, uh, if uh, my bigger sisters didn't, uh, uh, wouldn't have bothered her, she wouldn't have bought me another doll. I said, doll for Christmas. I said, what's she talking about? So he's, he was quite jolly. He said, Oh, girl, don't you know it ain't no Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like my husband. I was so hurt and let down, I didn't know what to do. So I got the doll, but I never could appreciate that doll. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't appreciate that doll because I knew Mother bought it. And from then on, why, whatever she got us for Christmas, she just get it and give it to us. And that was certainly sad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those were good days, though. I didn't know, didn't know it, but they were. Yeah. Did any of your grandparents our parents ever talk about the day before the Civil War and the slavery days? No, they hardly ever mentioned that. Hardly ever mentioned that. Mm -hmm. There was hardly ever brought up. Yes. We did. Uh, he knew about it. knew about it from mm -hmm. reading and mm -hmm. hearing about it. Mm -hmm. But they didn't they discuss it with us. Yeah. He has some notes here. Mm -hmm. What do you have? <laughs> you want me to read it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I sketched this off. <clears throat> I said, the town of Langston, once upon a time, has been a progressive little town, a very desirous place to live. All of my life has been spent three miles south and one mile west of Langston. And up until now, in the, in the city here, my, uh, let me see now, what's left, what did I say here? All of my life has been spent in three miles south and one mile west of Langston, and up until now, in the city here. Yeah, that is, I live out there mm -hmm. in the city here. Langston's population was very much larger than it is now. There were no vacant lots ever. Uh, no vacant lots. Every lot had a house on it, and every house was filled with a family and children. The early days of Langston was two blocks over from here. This was called the business part of town. Every type or kind of business was on those two streets that we call Main Street. What was the name of that street? Washington. Washington. The post office was operated earlier by a people by the name of Hazel Woods, later by Mrs. W.A. Ayers, my husband's sister, later by Mr. Cassius, our uh, army man. In, in the early days, we had a gin that took, took care of a farmer's cotton and a mill that grind our own corn for our cornbread. This was owned and operated by Mr. Walker and Sons. We had a telephone office 
operated by the Browns, later by the Trotter, and lastly by the Wells, Mrs. Mary Wells. We had a saloon owned and operated by a man by the name of Dan Arthur. We had four general stores, general merchandise, dry goods, and a hardware store owned and operated by E.L. Ayers, M.T. Amos, and Mr. Black, Mr. Mr. Black, and Ella Sellers. We had a doctor's office and a clinic owned and operated by a doctor by the name of Dr. Bell. We had a funeral home owned and operated by M.T. Amos, that's my father. Helpers were H.C. Andrews, my husband, and my brother who has passed away, Edward Amos, who was called Buster. We had a bakery owned and operated by a woman by the name of Mrs. Benson. We had a cleaning and pressing shop owned and operated by Anthony Trump. We had a fish stand and cafe owned and operated by Mr. Jones and Sons. This person also was a mail carrier. He brought the mail from Coral up to the Langston Post Office. Another cafe was run by a lady by the name of Mrs. Brown. We had taxi service. The taxi men were Mr. Canterbury and Mr. W.E. Hodge. We had a beauty parlor in the home of Mrs. Sally Smith, the wife of the man that run a filling station and grocery store a filling station and grocery store by Mr. Smith. We had a blacksmith shop owned and operated by a man by the name of Mr. Chapman. He has a home right up here, one block from us. We had two meat markets, the Brooks Meat Market and the Collins Meat Market. Everything that was in any other little town we had in nice. You mentioned the taxis. Taxi cabs. Okay. What kind of taxis did they have? They didn't call them taxis. They 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 were their own cars, but they used them in uh, as service as taxis. Mm -hmm. Whoever called them, they carried them somewhere. Else. <laughs> and a hut mobile. Hut mobile. Hut mobile and a hut. And they uh, delivered people, carried people to Guthrie, to call, and wherever they wanted to go to the shows, my husband would, uh, would uh, come after me to carry me to the show because our parents wouldn't let us walk from out where we were living to the show on the campus. He'd come out and get me in one of the taxis. <laughs> That's what got started. <laughs> Is that how you all met? Yes. That's how we met in school up here at Langston University. Okay. What year did you enter school? Oh, I, I finished eighth grade on the campus. Okay. See, they had the grades they had, up there. And, they, 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 and during those time, I st started school way back there in 1918. Was it a boarding school? Yes. Yes, it was a boarding school. And they raised every, they, they raised uh, whatever it took to take care of the dining hall. It was raised on that, on the farm of Langston University. Can you describe what an average day was like? School. At, the, on, yeah. at the campus? Yeah, in the boarding school. What well, time you'd get up in the morning, just what your average day was like? I, I didn't go to boarding. What I mean, I didn't stay on the campus. Oh, you didn't? No, I okay. didn't stay on the campus. I stayed in uh, my home okay, after you we stayed, moved okay. over to Langston. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. I didn't stay on the campus. How many students were in school at that time? Oh, it was around two and three hundred and one minute more or less, two and three hundred more or less, but all the school was housed in one building, and that was, uh, what was that, uh, Page, Page Auditorium, Page, uh, Page Hall. It has been torn down, which was very hurtful.
was very hurtful because that should have been a monument. Page Hall, it housed, it uh, took care of all the classes. We would go from room to room to classes, took care of all the classes, classes and the uh, games down on the lower floor, you know, from the auditorium. And the Page Hall was torn down, which was a regret to a lot of people. When was it torn down? Oh, during Dr. Hale's administration, I think, wasn't it, maybe? During a, about, about eight or nine years ago, it was torn down. It was a regret to a, a luminize of today. Was that the first building on, Ever on campus? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. That's a shame. It was the first building. Sure was. Who was head of the school when you were going there? J.M. Marcus was up. Uh, J.M. Marcus was uh, the first president. He, he was a beautiful president, so he stayed there for years and years. What was he like? He was just a down-to-earth person. <clears throat> he was a down-to-earth person. Uh, he could, uh, uh, any, any of the students could approach him and talk with him. I remember <coughs> during Easter time, pre-Easter, he would uh, head the, the, all the kids and we would all walk to Koa, you know, for an outing. And uh, th then we were to come back and hide Easter eggs and find, you know, find them. And he said, he, put, he said, well, the one that found the lucky Easter egg would get, get a prize. And so it was a girl that was walking beside him, run, ran her hand in his pocket, and there was the Easter egg. The <laughs> <laughs> and there was the Easter egg, you know, the prize Easter egg. So she, I don't remember just uh, what the prize was, but she got a nice prize. <laughs> but he, uh, he was in the middle, and all the student body was behind him and around him, and we walked clean to Koa and for an outing. And then we would come back to find our Easter eggs, and he had made that statement, so she ran her hand in his pocket, and that was the, that was, that was the prize Easter egg. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm about to think of her name. You little old light girl, I can't think of her name, but I'm about to think of it. What year did y'all get married? 1922. 1922. June the 10th. Where'd y'all first live when you got married? We lived we about six, about five or six blocks from, from where we are now, straight south here, what they call the Purtle House. We rented a little house there. That is, she's living there now. A lady by the name of Miss Purtle is living there now. The Depression, how did that affect you, 1930s? It, it didn't affect us much because uh, we just took what we had and, and made the best of it. You know, they were giving a uh, dark flower. Uh, we liked it. <laughs> Mama fixed it so it was, we, we didn't worry because uh, we raised, we raised our food. So what kind of work did you do after you got married? I went to uh, work most of, most of my work has been on, uh, on the, at the university. Mm -hmm. I went to that as a security mm -hmm. You worked at eggplant in the poultry farm? The biggest job has been I was working there after I got married. Mm -hmm. Now did you help uh, Mr. Amos in the funeral home? Yes. What was your duties there? Well, we just have to dress the bodies and uh, we'll pick up bodies like that with my brother, brother and daughter. 
Did you work there during the flu epidemic? Yes. 1918? Yes. That was tough. Mm -hmm. That's right. Did uh, was busy. many people die in this area oh, from yes. the flu? Yes. We see them today and tomorrow they has gone. That's right. What caused that flu epidemic? I don't know. But it sure did take a lot of people away from here. I guess it was nationwide, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Oh, yeah, it was nationwide. Yes, it was. It's just something happening. Doctors didn't know anything about you know. Just like, just, just like this. It's just kind of like this cancer now. Just. Yeah, someone mentioned that uh, the soldiers brought it back from Europe, you know, during the war. Yeah. Could have the been. soldiers going back. Could that's have. what I. That's what I heard. It was so rough. It was rough. I'm telling you. Did either of you have the flu? Yes, I had. I had. We were vaccinated, though. Um, it didn't go so hard did it? with the, me. Me, it did. Did uh, what kind of medicines or home remedies did they use for the flu back then? They used to most of most of tea and like that, which most of the and picked this what you call broomweed tea. Mm -hmm. Stew it down, make tea and like that. Mulling, boil it down, and you know, and for fever. Of leaves on your head. How do they? How do you make that tea? Broomweed. Broomweed. Yeah. Usually just put that on, on a pot of some kind of water. Of and water and boil I mean, it. is is it made from like broom corn or? No, it's just broomweed that grow it. Wild broomweed. Oh, broomweed. Yeah. Broomweed just that that's wild. But you see, tumbling around in. Mm hmm I catch that and it's first kind of dry a little. Put in a pot, water, and boil it. Mm -hmm. Drink it. It did the job too. Be kind of bitter. Yes, yeah. sir. Kaboom, sugar. Did um, Did either of your parents have any home medicines, home remedies they used? Lord, ask Spinity <laughs> if you can spit it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you make an acidity bag? A bag. Yeah. Just uh, uh, my mother would buy it and put it in a uh, a little white white piece of cloth, and uh, she would hang it. You know they say it's it, uh, uh, it's good for uh, accumulate. Kill John. Kill John. And she'd put it up over all the doors. A little bag, a little white bag, would be hanging in. What was in the bag? Hmm? What was in the bag? That asphyxity. What's it made of, Dino? Well, it was on. Uh, she you got buy it, it out of the store. Buy it out of the store. It's kind of a gum like stuff. It's in the box. The box. Then they take it and put it in a little bag about this size and hang it around your neck. That's right. Put a cord around your neck and let it hang down. Did it smell as bad as I've heard? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it smelled bad. Did right. it work? Sure did work. Well, we didn't know what doctors is. were. Of course, my mother said that she wore them and it worked because no one would get close to you. <laughs> it smelled pretty bad. Yeah. That's pretty. World War II. Was there much work for us? World War II, we were working at Tinker Field. What did you do at Tinker? Janitor work. You mentioned uh, WPA. <coughs> Were there many projects in this area? Yes, we had quite a few projects. Did you do any work for them? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What did you do for them? School uh, I was a uh, foreman of the, of the crew that we had here. We built this, built a lot of houses. We built this schoolhouse right up here out of Native Rock. Who was the supervisor of the WPA in this area? I don't remember. I don't remember. What kind of salary did you make? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that, but it was... This is, it supplied our needs. It supplied our needs, I know that. That's, first, that's when the... We started getting our social security cards, wasn't it? 30, 35, 37. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Was there any uh, CCC camps around here? Yeah, CC camps. Uh, that was for veterans, wasn't it? For those points. I, let me see. I'm not sure. But they had them, but they weren't right around here. But mm -hmm. quite a few of the boys went, went to CC camp on yeah. there. Were there any projects in this area? No. In CC? No. CC. How has the university changed since you all went there? <laughs> it has changed considerable. When we went there, the only fee that uh, uh, high school kids who were in the ninth, tenth, and eleventh, and twelfth grade would have to pay would be a dollar for laboratory fee. One dollar. We paid one dollar for laboratory fee. And all of the functions that were held at Langston University were free to students. They were just other than other than the shows. We had to pay to go to the shows. But all of the functions that was held up there, they were free to students. But the, I remember the laboratory fee is very I, I compare them sometimes with what they have to pay now. And I said, Lord, I'm mercy. It's been a long time. But we had to pay one dollar for laboratory fee. And uh, they had a... Uh, what was your question? How Langston how, has changed. Oh, how it has changed. Oh, yeah, it has changed considerable. It has changed considerable. The, dorma, the, the students in the dormitory were taken care of just like they were at home. That is, their matrons were really interested in their well-being. Students, Sunday mornings, uh, the, the matrons, I think they had two or three matrons. They didn't have too many matrons. But this matron would bring so many students to one church and the other matron and care so many students to the other church. Every student that wanted to got a chance to participate in church services every Sunday. The same way with shopping. When they got ready to shop, the, the matrons supervised them to the various stores and whatever they wanted to get down here, downtown up on their own on this street that I told you about where all the business. And they'd come and do their shopping. And when they got through with their shopping, they would gather together, the matron and carry them back home. The matrons were the same as their mothers. And they were the same as their children. You didn't hear no kind of rowdiness or nothing of that kind. Oh my goodness, Ever, everybody was just, looked like they you know, were at home, you know, with their family. It was beautiful. Now, did uh, the students live in Page Hall? Is that the dormitory? No, that's not the dormitory. They had, uh, the dormitory was for the over. And incidentally, one of the dormitories was a, uh, what you call it? Wasn't, wasn't a brick building. It was a wood building, you know, like yeah, this. Frame building. Yeah. Frame building, that's what I'm trying to say. It was a frame building. One of the dormitories was a frame building. And the class, whatever class, uh, the, the classes are, are in the morning, maybe one or two classes, say for instance, my class would uh, go and help the cook fix dinner for the student body. When the student body come in, that dinner was ready. Everything had been brought in from the farm there on the campus, and we helped prepare it. They sit down and they, they, they didn't, they weren't paying anybody to just want somebody, possibly the main cook. But our various classes helped to take care of the cooking, you know, and see that the, the students were served. And they had beautiful meals, good old, old time meals. What did the meals consist of? 
Oh, black eyed peas, brown beans, cornbread. They raise their hog, and they raise their chickens. Some days they would, we'd have uh, chicken for dinner. Some days we'd have pork. Some days we'd have beef. They raised everything that was went to, on that table. They raised it up there. Yes. They raised it right up there on yeah. the campus. So did you live in a dormitory when you went to no, school? No, I lived out here. Yeah, my sister was running the store, so I lived yeah. there. But all the, all the girls then wore, wore, wore uniforms. Yeah, I was going to ask if yeah, the students wore, had uniforms they wore. Black, black or blue skirts, white yeah. midi blouses. The blouses, you know, were made on a lawn with a big band. Mm -hmm. And in each corner was a star. In each corner that had a big sailor collar. And in each corner at the back was a, was a star. A blue star, a black star, a red star, yeah. and we, uh, and we had uh, drilling ever so often. I, I, I guess about three times a week, every student had to get out there and drill. Two. Just like military drill. And just like military, and it was beautiful because we were all dressed alike. Nobody had an inferiority complex about you dressing better than somebody else because we all wore the same kind of clothes. What about the boys? Did you boys wear dark pants, pants and uh, some kind of light shirt. Yes, sir. Did you make a uniform, have to buy it? or We made them. You made them? Yes, made them. So it was your uniform? That was my uniform. You still have yours? No, I sure don't. <laughs> I sure don't. I have a white one, you know, made like it. But I don't have, uh, well, I, I guess I could get one, but I have a white one made like it, but I don't have one. And I don't have the mini blouse. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And they taught sewing, and they taught uh, home economics. On the, on the, they taught us how to sew. They taught us how to cook. And that's one reason they was choosing the various classes to help with the dinner because they were taking home home economics yeah. and they give them a chance to demonstrate. And did the classes rotate that help cook the meals? Yes, that's correct. How often would you help cook? Our cl class? Yeah. Oh, um, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, I think it was about three or four classes. It would rotate. Yeah. Would rotate. So how many times a week would you cook? About once. About once a week? Once a week on my class. And you cook for the entire student body? That's right. Which was what? 100 students, 200? Um, more or less. Yeah. More or less. So what kind of classes did you take at Langston? My main class was uh, mechanics. What? Automotive mechanics or just mechanics in general? Mechanics in general. Taking carpentry. Look at this. The Langston streets were maintained by those who were in business. They'd buy cement themselves and make a, the, the walk in front of their businesses until, you know, all the streets, both of the streets, those main streets were paved. They maintained it themselves. And uh, if it was other work to be done, they, uh, what was it called, uh, poll tax. They collected what it what was called poll tax. I don't know what, it, what the poll meant, but it was poll tax that they collected. And uh, this went into a treasure for the upkeep of the town. And Langston was just as clean, was just as nice and clean and everything. Who was the mayor of Langston at that time? <laughs> See, I got some mayors here, I think. So I don't know who was. But Lord, I'm messing. Got more notes than I'll ever use. A man by the name of R.P. Moulton was one of the mayors. I don't know whether he was the first one or what. A.W. Laughlin. 
G.W. McKay. Now these are the 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 last the last ones. Dean Dean Hargrove. He was one of the teachers on the campus too. S.L. Dean S.L. Hargrove. Anthony Trotter. What was Mr. Good's first name? Yeah, oh yeah, L. Good, G. U. D. Belmont Trotter. M. B. Tolson. He 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 spent two terms in office. Charles Ray, Theodore Green, and A.B. Pruitt is our present mayor. How many kids do you have? Everybody. How many kids do you have? None. Our little daughter died. Oh, I'm sorry. We had one. Yeah, we had one child. She passed away. Mm -hmm. Who was um, Langston named after? Langston Hughes, a man by the name of Langston Hughes. Hey, who was he? I don't know. I'm, I'm not up on that, really. I, I guess I, I'm kind of embarrassed to say it, but uh, he's the Langston Hughes. Uh, do you know how come they chose this site for the university? Was there any reason? Well, I, I don't know whether he was living here uh, during that time or not, but he gave the spot. A spot was given for a colored college. Okay. Was it always a state university? That's right. That's right. When did it become? Uh, hmm? When did it become a non-all black college? When did they admit whites? Oh, uh, oh, recently it hadn't, it hadn't been too many years back. Yeah, they had it when, when this discrimination mess started. Yeah, that was in what, in 64? They passed the, the Civil 60, Rights Act in 64. Right. And by the way, it did used to be a Langston, it used to be a Langston Colored Agricultural and Normal University. That was his first name, and that was changed. When was that changed? I don't remember. Langston University and Langston University. Langston Color. Langston Color. No. Langston Color. Color. Oh, you and mentioned Langston. the saloon. Mm hmm. Who ran the saloon? Who ran it? A man by the name of Mr. What did I say? Arthur. Dan Arthur. Where'd he get his whiskey? I don't know. God knows I don't know. I just, I know we were scared to pass there. Oh, where he got his whiskey from? Who was the biggest bootlegger in town? I don't know that either. I sure don't. I don't know that either. Because we, we were scared of places like that. And didn't nobody go there but old people. You know what I mean, the, the age, you know? Very strict about that. Young people would run when they get near that. <laughs> <laughs> so they'd fly. We had a pool hall, too. Oh, sure, we had a pool hall. We had everything in Langston. I tell you what, what I what what I feel like, and I think it's the consensus of uh, the people, 
when the highway was put through here, Langston come as come in this way, thought it would be better, but it made it worse. It did. Yes, it did. It sure did. Langston was beautiful up on that end, but when this highway stuff was put through here, it come as come in this way, come in this way, come in this way, until what little we have is right down here. And that's fair little. Is there anything left up on Big Pond? Is there anything left up on old Main Street? No, no businesses. It's houses on the Main Street. It's the houses where the businesses were. They were changed they were changed into homes. So it's there's home. one old stone building up here that's mm -hmm. pretty well dilapidated. That's right. What was that? That was that's uh, where I used to work. That's where the post office that, used to be in the post post general store as Ayers building. Ayers General Store. Mm -hmm. That's where I worked. Yeah. Who built all the houses in Langston when the town was first growing? Oh, a man by the name of Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Uh huh. He was one of the good carpenters because he built this home. We didn't own it then. A widow, of Mr. Dean Hargrove's mother, owned it. However, but but he built it. And he was a good carpenter. He was doing quite a bit of the building. Mm -hmm. I don't remember any of them. Where did most of the people in Langston come from? You mean when they first came here? Yeah, like you came from Texas. Uh huh. And they they came from Texas, and I don't know where all they come from, but they got here. <laughs> it was a plenty of people in Langston. Ever, ever, ever a lot was filled, was a, was a house on it. That's the truth, and it was a family in it, a big family. Made the schools, well, of course I didn't, I didn't know them, didn't go to school up here, but made the schools great big. And we had a Catholic school once upon a time. Hmm. Back over here, back over here, run by Catholic sisters. What was the name of it? Other, I don't know other than it, we called it the Catholic school. I don't remember, but the, you know, if it had another name. Yeah. Was Langston an all-black town at that time? Yes. 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 There's plenty of black people was around. Is it still basically all black? Basically, yes. Basically, yes. Uh -huh. But near, not not near as many. They moved. Uh, moved out, you know, when the uh, jobs come in, so get in limited, they begin to move out. Children. What's the main, I'm sorry, what's the main industry around Langston now besides the university? <laughs> Nothing. Farm, I guess, the farming town? Farming town. Most people go out of work, go out. Mm -hmm. Down the road, as far as Oklahoma City. Little Oklahoma City and, and the Stillwater mm -hmm. work. Well, I think we have a good interview. Anything I you want to tell often, me? I very often say, wonder why, with very little education and very little experience, wonder why. We did so well way back there, and now with so much education and so much experience, so little is done. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> but that's the truth. It's the truth. Our parents that had very little education maintained Langston, mm -hmm. kept it going beautifully, and now people that I know got money and don't even want to put up a store. <laughs> Business and all like that. And when uh, one individual back there was putting up stores, putting up businesses with their limited education, limited experience and all like that, and did well. It's, it's just it's something funny about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but it's funny. Uh, is that is that is that um, are they telling what I'm saying about it here? <laughs> <laughs> be careful, I you better said. be careful what I say, but it is just the truth. Yeah. Uh, that worries me. It just worries me sometimes. I don't care if they hear that. <laughs> uh, uh,
that worries me sometimes. To know, I know my my mother made an X, and, but my and my father, you know, went to school. I guess about three months. He said out of a year. He went to school, but he was a. Uh, <coughs> Yes, wasn't he, edu he was an educated man and he'd come down to business. He knew business from beginning to end. And most of the others did. And that's the reason, I guess that's the reason they did so well. I think my, my father, when he was, he didn't have an education at all. He, could, he, could, he couldn't read, but he learned to read after we grew up. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have an education at all. 